So you want to get started on your own project car, modify your ride, you know, maybe a little suspension, brakes, add a bunch of power, or maybe you just want to do your own oil change and brake pads. Either way, you're going to need some proper tools to be able to work on cars. So in this video, I'm going to go through all the basic tools that you would need to start working on cars. Let's get it. All right. Let me start off by saying this. Tools are a unique kind of investment. They can get expensive, but the more they get used, the less they actually cost. Cause you don't have to pay someone to do the work for you. They also allow you to work on your own car, which I personally find very enjoyable and just relaxing. Nothing better than just zoning out, working on your car, fixing it or modifying it, and just making that car your car. That sense of accomplishment, unmatched. Also, keep in mind that there are some tools that you shouldn't buy. These are usually specialty tools or tools that you don't use often enough to justify the purchase, at least not at the start. So try not to get into this cycle of just buying and collecting shiny new tools. Use good judgment, don't waste your money. If you think you only need this tool once, don't buy it. Try to rent it or borrow it from a friend who has it. And then don't be like some people. Return what you borrow. Yeah, you know who you are. And hey, sometimes you just have to pay someone to do the work for you. It just makes more sense. Now, all the tools that I put on this list are tools that you'll use heavily when working on cars. Some of them you'll pretty much use every single time you step into your garage. I also have a link in the description for every single tool that I talk about. So if you don't already have them, have a look at the link. I've either put a link to the same exact one that I'm showing you here in this video, or I've done some serious vetting and I know they're good. All right, let's get to the fun part, the tools. First thing on the list is gonna be the hydraulic floor jack. Now you could get by with a scissor jack, which is just one of these. But these are much faster and safer to use. And they usually have a much higher lifting capacity compared to a scissor jack. This one that I have here is a three ton jack. It's gonna be okay for almost all cars and SUVs. Now the jack is only for lifting your car off the ground, not to hold it up there. So once you get your car off the ground, you need to support it with some jack stands. It's important to get something that can support your car's weight and more, because you really don't want these to fail while you're working under your car. Trust me. Okay, enough of this. Let's move on to the rest of the tools. All right, ignore all the mess in the back. Don't even look at it. Look at this. Next on the list is a decent set of sockets. The more complete the set, the better. You want the set to have both deep and shallow sockets in millimeters and inches. Now sockets also have a drive size. That's the size of the square opening at the other end of the socket, in case you didn't know. Most common sizes are half inch, three eighths, and quarter inch. Bigger sockets usually come in only half inch. Like 22 millimeters and above, they're usually just half inch. Now if you wanna use these with an impact gun, you need to get impact sockets. This one is an impact socket, this one's not. You cannot use regular sockets on your impact gun they will shatter in your face. And I like your face, don't do it. Now, if you get a socket set like the one that I've linked below, they usually come with the appropriate sized ratchets as well. But if they don't, you wanna make sure you get proper ratchets to use with those sockets, especially a half inch or a 3 8 one. When you're buying ratchets, you're gonna come across a number called the tooth count. This is the number of teeth the gear in the ratcheting mechanism has. Those are the teeth. The higher that number, the better the ratchet is for tight spaces where you don't have much room to swing the ratchet around. But that also means the gear has finer teeth, so they're not as beefy. The lower the tooth count, the beefier and stronger that mechanism is. But obviously you're gonna need more room to drive the nut. Generally speaking, a tooth count between 72 and 84 is a good all around number. Next is a set of extension bars and universal joints. Now you use these to get to those hard to reach bolts. This is a universal joint, it moves around so it could, you know, those awkward angles. They come in a whole bunch of sizes and lengths. You can either get a set or get the one that you need. But the socket set that I mentioned earlier also includes extension bars and universal joints. It's such a great value, like, now almost every nut and bolt on a car has a torque specification. You wanna make sure you stick with those specs so you don't strip or over tighten any of those bolts. And to torque something properly, you're gonna need a torque wrench. Listen, I don't care how much experience you have, not torquing your nuts and bolts is a rookie move. There, I said it. Next item on the list is a breaker bar. This is basically just a long ratchet 
without the ratcheting mechanism. Because you're going to come across bolts that are super tight or just seized. Or you haven't been going to the gym at all lately. All right, start Monday, sure. So you use this for extra leverage to break those loops. Now an impact driver is really a nice thing to have. Like this one that I have here is an absolute beast. But this is a much bigger investment compared to a breaker bar. And to be honest, in certain situations, like getting the crank bolt off, the only way you can actually apply that much torque is using a breaker bar with a long metal pipe. That's insane. Next thing you're gonna need is a combination wrench set. These have an open end jaw at one end and a box end of the same size on the other end. Honestly, I would only get a full set in millimeters unless you're working on old American cars, get the full set in inches as well. But even the newer Camaros and Mustangs, they use millimeters as far as I know. So you can also get the ratcheting ones, but you shouldn't. I know they seem so much more convenient and just faster to use, but one, they're more expensive. And two, that ratcheting mechanism is always a weak point that can break. But look at this thing though. It's literally just a hunk of metal. Like this won't break as easily. Good stuff. Now, sometimes you're gonna come across these bolts that none of your sockets or wrenches seem to fit. Or it's just a weird shape, like a square. In those situations, you want one of these adjustable wrenches. You wanna get a decent one of these because the cheap ones usually have loose jaws. That means there's a lot of play here this could potentially slip and round your bolt. And trust me, that will really mess up your day. Now, the one that I've linked below is actually very nice with almost no play in the jaws. Next thing you're gonna need is an Allen key or a hex wrench set. The ones that came with your IKEA furniture, unfortunately, aren't gonna be enough. I know, I saved them too, I don't know why. Now, I personally prefer using these sockets whenever I can, as opposed to these keys, because I can just use my ratchets and drivers, you know, it's just much faster. You're also gonna need a Torx wrench set, especially if you're working on German cars. Like for some reason, Volkswagen loves using Torx bolts virtually everywhere. And just like Allen wrenches, you can get them in these sockets too. You're definitely gonna need some pliers. You can get them one by one, but sets are usually a better value. Just make sure the set comes with at least one set of needle nose pliers and at least one set of these tongue and groove pliers. Now some people call these channel locks, but it's like calling tissue Kleenex. You know, it's just a brand. Another thing you should probably buy in a set our screwdrivers. Just make sure the set comes with a couple sizes of Phillips heads and flat heads. And make sure they have a magnetic head. That is a must. Next thing you're gonna need in your toolbox is probably something you already have. A hammer and a rubber mallet. I have no idea where my hammer is, but this is my rubber mallet. You use the rubber mallet when you wanna hit something without damaging the finish. Now, if you hit something hard enough with this, you're still gonna damage the finish. Just keep that in mind. Now we get to the electrical stuff. And to do any sort of electrical work or wiring, you're gonna need some basic tools. Remember, bad wiring can actually destroy electrical components or even worse, cause a fire. So use proper tools and technique to fix or do any sort of wire. At the very least, you're gonna need something to cut wires. You're gonna need something to strip wires. And in most cases, you're gonna need to crimp on some sort of connector. You can get this one tool that does all of that. But if you know you're gonna be doing a whole bunch of electrical work or wiring, you wanna do what I did. I have a wire cutter to cut wires with, and I have a wire stripper that strips the wires. Like look at this thing. This thing's insane, it's so clean. And I have a ratcheting crimping tool to crimp on connectors to make all my crimping nice and consistent. But if you know for a fact that you're not gonna be doing a lot of wiring or electrical work, I would go with the combo tool. It takes a lot less room in your toolbox and it costs a lot less. Another thing you're gonna need is a multimeter. Truth is, multimeters can get very expensive. So don't get carried away here. All you need is something to show you voltage, current, and resistance. And that's it, trust me. The one that I have in the link below is more than enough. So that's it. That's all you really need to start messing around with your car. Now you probably already have a few of them or none of them at all, which is fine. You'll get there. Tools aren't something you buy in one shot. It's a huge investment. Well, unless you're getting some garbage quality tools, but...
It's something you accumulate over time as you need them. So get the tools that you need right now and the rest can wait till you need them. Another thing to keep in mind, and I know it's gonna be an unpopular opinion, but you don't need stuff like snap-on tools or anything in that ridiculous price range. You'll need tools that will last you a long time for the least amount of money. But with tools, you do get what you pay for. So don't go too cheap either. You know, save up a little if you have to. I hope this video helps and let me know down in the comments if I miss anything, which I probably did. So looking forward to those in the comments, consider subscribing if you haven't already. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram and thanks for watching.